Welcome to the legendary Nikon F2 or as they say in Japan the Nikon F2 in the United States of America it will be Nikon but because I'm English it's Nikon and we'll stick with Nikon so the F2 was made by the Nippon Kogaku KK company between 1971 and 1980 now the serial number on the Nikon F2 which is there is a slight indicator of year of manufacture this is only an estimate because at any point in the camera's life the top plate could have been changed and a new serial number attached so it's just a rough guide in this case this particular camera was made between June and October of 1976 and for any older British viewers you'll remember that 1976 was the year of the heat wave it was the year of sweltering heat burning sunlight water shortages <laughs> waiting for your turn at the standpipe this camera was approximately a 1976 baby now one of the most obvious things to say about this camera when you first pick it up is that it's built like an absolute rock it is solid and as the great Ken Rockwell once stated the original Nikon F of 1959 was the camera that put Leica in its coffin and the F2 was a camera that the almighty himself used to hammer home the nails <laughs> and I couldn't have put it any better myself obviously but what an absolute monster beast of a camera now sadly this beautiful camera is not mine it was kindly loaned to me by a friend so uh, really do appreciate that Arj and uh, I hope you like this review of your beautiful amazing camera I can't wait to use it so the Nikon F2 had many slight variations this particular model is called a Nikon F2 photomic because of the metered prism finder on top of the camera there now unfortunately as is quite often with these old meters the meter is it's not working fully it, it's flickering I've, it wasn't working at all when I first picked up the camera uh, but it is flickering on and off occasionally it's not very reliable uh, so I'm not going to use it I'm going to use to record my light I'm going to use the the Sekonic Flashmate L308B just to record the light beautiful little meter that never lets me down now you can remove these prisms and add a different prism another version of a metered prism or a non-metered prism or even a waist level finder to remove this prism finder is a little bit of a mission i find you have to press this button here press down that lever there so when you press that in you press that in lower the lit press that you press that in lower the lever oh press that in lower the lever then you come around to the back and you press this one here and it's supposed to just lift off but man I tell you what I really struggle I really do struggle to get this thing on and off there you go there you go got it one of the attachments you can get is a waist level finder where you're kind of looking down at the camera which would be good for anybody hip shooting or wanting a lower angle or the camera does actually function as a, as a as a makeshift waist level finder by just looking down onto the onto the Fresnel screen there and uh, that will give you an image take off the lens cap obviously Paul would be a good idea there you go so now you can see possibly now you can see what I can see and we've just taken a picture we haven't because there's no film in it but you get the drift but uh, yeah just a just a great little feature now when you want to replace this metered finder you have to set the aperture to 5.6 that will allow this pin here to sit between these so-called rabbit ears that will then adjust the camera to allow the light meter to function and you just press it on simply like that like I say I'm just going to use the viewfinder because I don't actually trust the meter it's flicking all over the show uh, not very accurate this is a 35 millimeter single lens reflex camera so what we're going to do we're just going to have a look around the body have a look at some of the features and then we'll get some film loaded so first thing to note we'll go to the front of the camera you've obviously got the lens we'll just straighten that up make it look tidy you've got a self timer there and that goes from two seconds right up to 10 seconds so that's that's quite a nice little feature on the other side of the camera this is your lens release mechanism and this little port here when i take that off that will allow you to attach a flash sync lead okay and there's there's nothing else really to show you on the front of the camera the top plate of the camera this is your film rewind crank so you pop that up like so and then you just rewind your film 
it's also got because there's no flash hot shoe on this camera you've got this little area here where you can buy a separate flash attachment that you slide on there that will allow you to sit a flash on top of the camera uh, but we haven't got one so we're not going to use it obviously we've got the asa or iso dial selector you just lift that up and turn it round to your desired setting but again because i'm using a handheld meter we don't need to worry about that you turn this dial as well and that will allow you to set your shutter speeds we've got the film advance lever here open the film advance lever you've got a red dot there and if you can see that red dot that engages the battery to power the light meter then when you want to shut the camera off so it's not draining your batteries you just press the lever all the way back into the body to advance the film you give it a nice short stroke like so the camera is now charged here is your shutter release button and she sounds absolutely amazing also on here you've got a, a time setting where you can turn the outer collar that will allow you to take timed exposures in the opposite direction you've got an l setting here and when you lift the collar turn it to l you cannot depress the shutter that just locks it so there's no accidental misfirings uh, what else can i show you on top of the camera nothing so let's look at the back of the camera this is the other part of the release mechanism for the photonic head which that, that one's the most awkward part i think for me personally you've got a little slot here on the back where you can put the film label from the box just as a reminder to let you know what film you've got in the camera well, that was pretty funky on the base plate of the camera not a great deal to show you really you've got the battery compartment which will take two lr44 batteries just to power the light meter otherwise this camera is fully mechanical you've got a standard tripod mount there here you've got three little connections and that is for a a powered motor wind attachment that you could buy just to speed up the camera for news or sports photography so let's open the back door now most slr cameras you pop up the rewind crank and that will open the door on the nikon f2 that ain't gonna happen you lift up this key give it a turn and the door pops open just like so look at that oh so what i'm going to do is just do a few little basic checks just to make sure the camera's functioning okay before i stick a film in so the first thing i'm going to do is wind onto the next frame just to check that the titanium shutter curtains are moving so they seem to be moving quite well and then we're going to give it a fire test fire just to see if the shutter curtains open which they do i'm just going to slow this down so you can see it a bit better let's put it down at 15th of a second and then we're going to press again there you go and you can see quite clearly that the shutter curtains are opening i'm just going to take off the lens i just want to check that the mirror is going to lift as well so let's just check and see if the mirror lifts oh she does so the mirror lifts the shutter curtain opens we are laughing a little bit dirty there you go so put back on the lens if i had my preference personally i would get rid of the photomic head because it, it just makes it a lot more bulky and it, obviously in this case because the meter is a bit patchy it doesn't really serve much of a purpose it looks quite cool but i think it just looks a bit bulky i'd prefer a smaller prism finder uh, even the waist level finder actually i, I think that would be quite cool but uh, other than that what a gorgeous gorgeous camera so let's now load it up with film now the only roll of film that i've got available at the moment is a roll of roll eye rpx 100 36 exposures black and white film so let's slot this into the camera so what we're going to do first we're going to open the back door now you're supposed to obviously when you're loading film you're supposed to do this in subdued lighting uh, so doing it out in the sunlight is absolutely not recommended whatsoever but just for this particular demonstration this is what i'm going to do lift up the film locking mechanism slot in the film there drop the mechanism down and that will lock the film in place we're going to pull out a little bit of the leader drop the leader into one of these slots here and then we're going to advance so just hold hold the film there we're going to advance make sure we get some take up there we're going to give it one extra advance just to make sure it's moving that's taken up quite well so we're going to close the back door now and then we're going to rewind the film slightly just until we feel a little bit of tension and that will make sure that there's no loose film in there at all and then we're going to wind on two more times just to make sure the film's advancing and that we're, we're not taking pictures on an already exposed strip of film one thing to check to ensure that your film is actually loaded correctly when you advance the frame the rewind knob will turn at the same time so just check as you advance that should be turning and it is so we're going to fire that off we're going to do it one more time that guys is now charged and ready to fire i'm going to put the shutter button on to lock 
just to make sure I don't accidentally trip it off and then we are ready to go I've not shown you the lens what a Muppet so the lens is a Nikkor S Auto 50 millimeter 1.4 it was made by the Nippon Kogaku company in Japan it's got apertures ranging from 1.4 to f16 beautiful piece of kit I cannot wait to give this a go right she's loaded let's go play I can feel, I can see, I can feel so much I wish you'd go Full roll on there, man. She is. Beautiful. So, what about a week later? I've managed to pop off a roll of 36 exposures and I've got 24, 25 images that I'm, I'm pretty pleased with. I was on a road trip, so the first place I called into was a small rural town called Fielding. And there's a few heritage buildings there, stormy, dramatic sky above, and some nice light hitting the buildings. So I popped off two or three shots around there, quite happy with those pictures. And then I went into Palmerston North to photograph a protest. And before the protest started, I dropped on a group of bikers who were raising money for cancer charities. So I popped off a few shots there and then onto the protest, but I shot the protest with the Leica Q2. The video and the stills of that protest are up above. I'll put a link there if you're interested. And then I took some photographs of my grandkids. I shot my granddaughter and she's just 24 seven moving, running about. She's two years old almost. And man, she's, she's just a bundle of energy. So trying to get a photograph and focus on her. <laughs> mission i don't think i hit focus on one shot i'll put a few photographs in just to show you what i got and then the young grandson he's oh, what is he six months seven months eight months something like that i don't know he just lays there and he just does his own thing so i managed to get some nice close focus onto the boy and i shot those photographs at 1.4 and i think without a shadow of a doubt those photographs are the best ones that i've got out of this camera without a doubt I, you know just they've, they've come out really really nicely and then i just finished off the roll a bit of an art structure on the waterfront there again they're okay what i have noticed is the center of the photographs the ones that i've got in focus beautiful for an old film camera they've come out really really well but on some of the photographs even the ones i've got in focus even though the center of the image is tech sharp when you get to the edges man there's a massive fall off now i developed this roll of film myself the d76 i used is probably eight nine months old and it was quite cloudy so yeah Quite possibly the development has let me down a little bit. For a 100 speed film, they are quite grainy. And I've also scanned them myself, whereby I photographed the negatives and then uploaded them to Lightroom and just kind of done a Lightroom curves inversion. The absolute upshot is, for an old camera, I'm quite impressed with it. The experience shooting the Nikon F2 Photonic, I really enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. It's just a, just a great little camera to shoot. And the best news of all, is that my mate Arj has not bought a dud. She's actually bought a fully functioning, or almost fully functioning, the light meter doesn't work, yeah, so forget about that. But apart from that, the camera is fully functioning. I'm just a pleasure to use. Just, she's, ah, she's, she's gonna get some bloody enjoyment out of this camera. I'm pretty sure of it. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you again in a future episode. Oh. Where the river still runs deep. Even though there's an ocean under your feet So we losing our minds When we try and speak And I'll wait Till you're under my skin And I'll ask it in ways In ways So draw a smile Fades away, and I'll ask you to stay for our lives to condensate. Don't need to be ruined Your 
Kiss the life out of what you love 